Johann Sanz Wilhelm Geikner was born in Ludenstadt an der Hat, which is now Ludenstadt an der Rheinstrasse in Germany, on the 30th of September 1882. His father, Wilhelm Ludwig Geigner, was a professor at the University of Ilenge from 1881 to 1920. The eldest of five children, Geiger was educated first at the Ilenge Gymnasium, from which he graduated from in 1901. After completing his requirements for military service, he studied physics, the study of relationships between matter and energy, at the University of Munich and at the University of Ilenge, receiving a doctorate from Ilenge in 1906 for his study of electrical releases through gas. Geigner then moved to Manchester University in England where he met Ernst Rutenford, head of the physics department. Rutenford and Geigner began a lifelong personal and professional friendship. They began experiments based on Rutenford's detection of releases of alpha particles, particles with positive electrical charges from radioactive substances, substances whose atoms gave off particles of matter and harmful rays of energy. Since alpha particles can penetrate thin walls of solid, Rutherford and Geigner presumed they could even move through atoms. Geigner designed a machine that would shoot alpha particles through golden foil onto a screen. They would then observe the tiny flashes of light. Counting the thousands of flashes per minute was a long, hard and even epileptic task. Geigner decided to try and invent an easier, more accurate way to count them. His solution was an early version of the Geiger counter an electrical machine designed to count releases of alpha particles. In 1912, Geigner returned to Germany as a director of the new laboratory for radioactivity at the Physikalik Techniken Reidenstoll in Berlin, Germany, where he invented an instrument for measuring not only alpha particles, but other types of radiation. Radiation is the giving off of energy and particles from atoms, and he did that as well. Geigner's research was interrupted by the start of World War I. He then joined the German army, and he was a German troop and Geigner fought as an artillery officer opposite his many old colleagues from Manchester, including Marston and H.G.J. Mosley from 1914 to 1918. Crouching in the trenches for four long years on the front lines left Geigner with painful rheumatics, stiffness and pain in his joints. With the war over, however, Geigner returned to Reidenstall. In 1920, he married Elizabeth Hefter, with which he had three sons with. But now, to the Geiger. In 1925, Geigner became a professor of physics at the University of Kiel in Germany. While there, he developed with Walter Müller the Geiger-Müller counter, commonly still referred to as the Geiger-Müller counter or the Geiger counter. The counter can locate a spinning alpha particle within about one centimeter in space and within a hundred millionth of a second in time. In 1925, Geigner used his counter to confirm the existence of light quantum or packets of energy. Geiger left Kiel for the University of Tobagin in October 1929 to serve as Professor of Physics and Director of Research of its Physics Institute. Installed at the Institute, Geiger then worked constantly to increase the Geiger counter's speed and ability to detect. As a result of his efforts, he was able to discover bursts of radiation called the cosmic ray shower, and he concentrated on this study for the rest of his career. But the Nazis are yet again going to stop the research. Geigner returned to Berlin in 1936 upon being offered the chair of physics at the Technische Hollenschule. He continued experimenting and improving on the counter, the Geiger Müller. He would also become involved in politics somewhat after Adolf Hitler's rise to power in Germany and the German Nationalist Socialist Workers' Party or the Nazi Party. He composed a petition paper which was signed by 75 of Germany's most notable physicists. The paper was presented to Adolf Hitler's education ministry in late 1936. The document urges the government to keep its hands off science, complaining that they were far too new physicists and that students were avoiding the subject in Germany because of the newspaper's attacks on physics by the Nationalist Socialist Abapartei, or the Nazi Party, because physics was a Jewish science. Geigner continued to work at the Technik Hollingschulen through World War II. Although he was often confined to bed with the aforementioned reformatics, he had just started to show signs of improvement of his health when his home near Babelsberg in Germany was occupied in June 1945 by the Red Army. Geigner was forced to flee to Potsdam in Germany where he died on the 24th of September 1945. Although Geiger signed a petition against the Nazis government's interference with universities, he provided no support for the colleague Hans Werther the winner of the 1967 Nobel Prize in Physics when he was fired for being Jewish. 
Also, at the beginning of 1939, after the discovery of the atomic fusion, Geiger was a member of the Uranium Club, the German equivalent to the Manhattan Project. It was also the German investigation into nuclear weapons and arms during World War II, the Manhattan Project. The group splintered in 1942, however, after it was incorrectly determined that nuclear weapons would not play a major role in the ending of the war. They were right. They played a major role in the ending of the world. If it was to happen. Geigner endured the hostilities in Berlin and the occupation of the Red Army and the subsequent Soviet occupation from April to May 1945. Two months later, he moved to Potsdam, dying there two months later but he died after the first nuclear bomb exploded over Hiroshima in Japan. All his life work, all the Geiger counters he built, led up to this moment. All the good we did, it doesn't matter in the end. Chernobyl was nonsense. But thanks guys, thanks for watching. That was a great video. Long and hardy, but I did it in takes, so hopefully I'll just take one take. Bam, take one take, bam. They just pick out what I want, because it's a lot of repeating, but hopefully I can take out what I want. There are a couple of sections where I have to split it in two, so that would be the big tricky one, but 40 minutes, i got nothing to do. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, but um, let me see what I can do here. Vi Koroshi, Keto El Sadili, Ni Yamayet Tamari Kyaria, Dila Nika Paroshotu. Chekas para vile vost, vost toros vali bolo vala, promisiet, para vila mari, yeto ramzuna mari, vi chenobol nege, ni bula. <coughs> All the good we did, it doesn't matter. What does matter to them was justice was done. You see, a just world is a sane world. Nothing was sane about Chernobyl. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, enjoy and um, keep those Geiger counters up. Who knows, who knows. Fallout 5 coming soon. Fallout 76 coming soon to a store near you. Fallout Battle Royale. We have done. We have done the impossible boys. But anyway, thanks for watching and GG. Richter scale. What is the Richter scale? Let's do that next. Now, I was thinking about doing spiking, but it's now 7 o'clock, so Geiger scale for you guys. Enjoy the radioactivity and the toxicity in the chat. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, learn something, comrades. Sukabliet das Vidania. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged and there is speculation in Moscow that people were injured and may have died. The Soviets may have been fairly quick to acknowledge the accident because evidence in the form of mild nuclear radiation had already reached beyond the Soviet borders to Scandinavia.